the Raptors are back in Toronto to play their first playoff game in the city since the 2019 NBA Finals. They're gonna need all the good vibes that they can get, obviously trailing 0-2 in this series against the Philadelphia 76ers. Joining me to discuss how the Raptors can get back into it is, of course, that guy, Javon <laughs> Shepard. Javon, obviously a bit of a mountain to climb for the Raptors. There's some key points that can help the Raptors get back into this. Let's start with Tyrese Maxey and Tobias Harris. Well, first you have to credit those guys for playing as well as they have, right? Especially for Maxey playing the best basketball in his young career right now. And I think for the Raptors, you know, the, the thing is, has been they've paid so much attention to Embiid and Harden and Maxie and Harris and even, you know, Danny Green have been on the perimeter just slashing and cutting and just making shots. And just make those guys think, right? Get them in an area where you want Maxie to, to, to think about shooting the three ball, want him to think about penetrating, as well as Tobias, as well as Danny, because they're playing simple basketball. They're playing off of the feature of guys and getting some easy things going for themselves. Yeah, for me, you know, the Raptors are so dependent on their ability to scramble, but it's about when you're scrambling, right? It's one thing if Joel Embiid gets deep position and then you've got to force the ball out of his hands and now you're scrambling. It's another when James Harden, who the Raptors have shown that they can stick with one-on-one -on -one that you're overhelping on and now you get yourself into a bad position. I think that's the starting point for the Raptors defending Maxi better. Show Maxi some of the respect that you're showing James Harden, and I think it'll work out a bit better. Tobias Harris, I'll leave it as simple as this. Force him left. You, you see him going to his right multiple times. Um, I think he's a player that likes going that way, and if you can force him the other way, it forces him into a more uncomfortable position. Next up, we got to talk about the Scotty Barnes absence. Obviously, his injury has been a huge disadvantage for the Raptors. How do they replace what he brings to the table? V, that's a tough one, right? Because you look at Scotty's physical ability, and he embodies all that, and he's done that this whole season, playing that point forward, defending one through five as well. But I think, you know, the, the biggest thing that he brings to this team that you can supplement right now is his energy. Right, and, and that's what's missing, and that's carried this team, you know, dug them through some deep holes this year and, and, and you know, rose them to the top. But that's a concerted effort from the group that you can get, you know, from player one through five to ten, the, the 10th man on the end of the bench is just bringing that energy and getting that energy because, again, that's, I, I found that's what's been missing a bit um, during these first two games of the series is that there's been some, there's peaks and valleys, and that's not going to happen, that's not going to change overnight. But you have 12 guys on your bench and coaches and support staff that can create some energy that Scotty brings. Yeah, when I look at the starting lineup, it's not too bad. You, you, you know, you get Precious coming into the lineup. We've seen his ability to defend Embiid one-on-one. -on -one. We've seen his ability to defend Harden one-on-one. -on -one. Um, he's got to pop that three a bit more if he's going to be in that starting lineup. Uh, but the main thing for me is those non-Embiid minutes. We were used to seeing Scotty sort of lead that bench unit going up against those uh, non-Embiid units. And now you've got to create a bit of a different energy as you were uh, talking about. Talking about Embiid, he has been getting to the line a ton. So has James Harden. How do the Raptors minimize that damage at the free throw line? Well, first you call Mark Gasol. And then you tell him you need some help here. No, but I, I think with Embiid, you kind of have to give him some box and one treatment, right? Full court, because again, he's, he, he gets deep positions and there's no stopping him. The Raptors aren't going to be able to stop him. Guess what? He's, he's the league leading scorer. Nobody's been able to stop him. So that's not going to change overnight as well. But I think what you can do is really play that mental game with him, frustrate him and play him 94 feet. As soon as he inbounds that ball, somebody's got to be in front of him. Where, where Embiid's concerned, you know, last night he, he shot more free throws than the entire Raptors team. And I think that's something that has to be limited. And again, you're not going to stop him. He's going to get deep touches. You know, he's going to get into the perimeter. We've seen him last night, you know, hit a fadeaway from a corner into three. He's versatile and he's scoring very dynamic a number of ways. Yeah, a couple of things for me, either foul him hard or don't foul him at all. You know, <laughs> those touch fouls are the ones that kill you. you give him the and one. Uh, obviously, they are going to be in Toronto now, but you can see the way it gets their juices flowing when they're able to get those and one plays. And the other thing, too, is, you know, if you're fouling him in deep position to sort of get them to reset and inbound the ball, that's one thing. When you're fouling him right off the catch, that's because you haven't put yourself in the right position. 
And that's where you got to do better. And they'll have some home court refs. I've said enough. <laughs> I've said enough there. We'll see. We'll see about that. Now, refs or no refs, uh, you look at the offense, maybe there's some things that can, they, they can do to be in a better flow. Uh, what are you seeing so far on that end? Well, getting back to, to Raptors basketball, what we've seen over the season is that it was a scrappy team, it was a greedy team, it was a tough team, right? Got to win those offensive rebounds and give yourself some more possessions. Then you, got, you actually got to knock down some shots, right? I've seen a, a number of times is, you know, got to capitalize on Embiid and his drop coverage. Uh, I thought Fred started out well with that yesterday, but a number of guys got to attack Embiid and, and force him to play defense, force him to exert energy as well. Um, then get out and run, right? Get some steals, get some deflections. I don't think we've seen that yet. Philly's been the bully. Philly, Philly's been that big brother that's really, you know, applied the pressure to this Raptors team. And it, it's just a skeleton of, of the team we know. It's, it can't just be Fred in the pick and roll situation. You've got to get Pascal in there. OG's got to be in there because those guys have the physicality. They have the length as well to get downhill, to make shots when he's in drop coverage, also to facilitate. So it's got to be a bit more dynamic and not just have that stagnant look that, they, that we've seen. And they've exerted so much energy. It just seems like for every shot they get, they use 10 times more energy than Philly is on their offensive end. And you know they're in a funk offensively sometimes when you see the floor imbalance when they're defending in transition, right? And the, uh, the offense is taking shots at the wrong time, putting them in a bad spot. And that's where I feel like those other guys got to be shot ready and those other guys got to get those opportunities to shoot as well. Precious, Boucher, Malachi Flynn, they got minutes in the first half. They combined for zero three-point attempts. Pascal, you know, catch and shoot situations are not something you expect generally with him because he's setting up the offense so much. But when those opportunities present for himself as well, he's got to take them. On that note, for him to be the second best player in this series going forward, because that hasn't been the case so far, it's probably been Embiid, Maxi, and Harden, which is why you've got Philly dominant through the first two games. What does Siakam need to do to be the be second best player the rest of the way? Adapt, right? And I think, you know, Pascal's played well this whole season for the Raptors, but guess what? It's playoff basketball now. It's a completely different season. I would like to see him take, you know, a couple more post positions. Uh, and use his, use his length, use his athleticism to his advantage and his size because that way you're avoiding that defense, not allowing four guys to shrink the floor, but one. And then obviously you have Embiid on the other side, outside of the paint. He's not going to want to come over and recover. He's not going to want to come over and help. You're also quicker. So once you beat that first defender, you're going to have an advantage at the basket. And then again, um, attacking dynamically and, and using those pick and roll situations. And it sounds like a broken record forcing Embiid to defend. He's in drop coverage. He doesn't want to step up. You get by that first defender, it's you against the world right there. And Pascal's shown his ability to score the basketball a number of ways. Just got to mix it up a bit. Yeah, and one guy I think that can really help him, we saw it in game two. He dropped 20 points in game one, OG Ananobi. You saw the offense sort of go through him in that second half a little bit. And if he can present himself as that much of an offensive threat, I think it's going to take some of the pressure off, some of the attention off of Pascal and make life a bit easier for him. Well, there you have it. Hit us up in the comments with what you think the Raptors need to do to get back into this series. Javon, plain and simple, do the Raptors win game three? They got to. They got the home court advantage. You know, they know what they're walking into right now. This team has come out, they've punched them, they've, they, they've hit twice now, you know, first. And, and the Raptors gotta come out and just be aggressive, use the home court to their advantage. Um, hopefully that whistle goes their way now and, and you just you need a couple calls you need a couple 50 50 balls to go your way to get that rhythm going but again I think they understand the level of intensity this is a young group so this is also great for the development now you know what you're walking into everybody's got to step up everybody's got to lay it on the floor and hey you've got two nights off after this game so all hands on deck whatever needs to be done whoever needs to play how many minutes all of that is on the table Hit us up in the comments with your takes on what needs to happen, and we'll catch you in a bit.